national correspondent Ed Henry and the story behind Clinton Incorporated. Ed? Good to see you, Megan. After November 8th, some of the world's most influential corporations may still be pouring money into the Clinton's personal coffers. That's because while Bill and Hillary Clinton have promised to swear off new fundraising for the foundation, if she's elected, this leaked memo suggests the door is wide open for millions of dollars in consulting fees to continue flowing to Bill Clinton, even if his wife is president. Today on the trail, Donald Trump was all over the re release of this damaging email detailing what you called Bill Clinton, Inc. That was not coming from Trump. That's coming from former Clinton confidant Doug Band. Now on the outs, after he alleged it was a strategy, actually, to steer donors for the foundation to hire Mr. Clinton for speeches and consulting. The 2011 memo revealing the plan, quote, yielded more than $30 million for him personally, with $66 million to be paid out over the next nine years, meaning it could continue from 2011 to 2020, or the end of his wife's first term if she's in office. Unless, of course, there's public pressure and Bill Clinton is forced to sever some of those contracts. Now, Bann wrote the memo after Chelsea Clinton blew the whistle on allegations that his company, Teneo, was making money off of access to her father. He fired back. The foundation literally had about 500 conflicts of interest. He fur further alleged the former president was collecting money from at least three sponsors of CGI, the Clinton Global Initiative, and accepted personal gifts as well. The Clinton camp has so far refused to even acknowledge the authenticity of these WikiLeaks emails, but the company Bann co-founded did confirm the accuracy of his memo, though they insist tonight Teneo never benefited financially from the charity, Megan. Mm -hmm. And thank you. The question tonight is how much does this stunning new information reinforce some of the worst perceptions of Hillary Clinton? And how much does it matter, just 12 days away from the election? Tom Bevan is co-founder and publisher of RealClearPolitics.com. Bill Burton's a former Obama White House Deputy Press Secretary. And Monica Crowley is a Fox News contributor. Great to see you all. Monica, let me start with you on those two questions. Well, Megan, we know that the most problematic scandals for any candidate are the ones that reinforce a pre-existing negative notion about that person. The problem for Mrs. Clinton is that these constant WikiLeaks disclosures remind voters of 30 years of Clintonian corruption, and it also reinforces a sense of pure exhaustion that most people feel when, when exposed to the Clintons for any length of time. When you're getting this constant WikiLeaks drip, drip, drip of pay to play and the idea that Mrs. Clinton leveraged her public office as Secretary of State to enrich herself, her husband, and their foundation, um, I think it really tells voters that it gives them a glimpse of the past, what we experienced, first of all, with the first Clinton presidency, and a glimpse of the future in mm -hmm. terms of what a Hillary Clinton presidency would be, and that's not a good look for her. The thing is, Bill, it makes it sound like uh, that Bill Clinton was getting rich uh, as he solicited donations for his charity, it was like a little for the charity. And what about Bill? Hey, here I am, right? You know, right? And she's, she's not even promising to shut this thing down. You know, if, if she becomes president. Megan, first of all, we can't let this conversation get too far down the tracks without saying Russia, Russia. is trying to have an no, impact I know. on our election. I know. They don't want these documents. They have not been confirmed bad, by the Clinton bad. campaign. They it's not just, just our oh, yeah, Russia is not any good. Putin wants Donald Trump to be president. That's why this is public to begin with. It's true. Second that is all true and valid. I but think at this point, <laughs> yes. But second, second point. At this point in the election, voters are voting. Ten million voters have voted. The rest of the voters in the final days here are trying to decide who's the best person to be commander in chief. If you look at this news and you're a Trump supporter, it reinforces what you already thought about the Clintons. If you're a Clinton supporter, you think, okay, whatever, enough of with, with all the WikiLeaks. For the folks in the middle, they're trying to decide who's going to be the best commander in chief. This is not going to have any impact whatsoever on whether or not people think Hillary Clinton should or should not be the commander in chief. Donald Trump is running out of paths to 270 electoral votes, and this does not create a new one for him. All right, so let's pick it up there, Tom, uh, with you on the polling and whether you agree that Donald Trump is running out of paths to 270 because the Trump camp believes they have momentum. The Fox News poll that just came out shows her leading only by three and shows her lead shrinking and shows his uh, standing with independents getting better and his standing with Republicans getting better as well. Well, look, I, I agree with Bill that Trump is behind right now and, and certainly has a lot of ground to make up. But where I would disagree with Bill is that, look, this is, um, you know, those, those voters in the middle are trying to decide, right? And, and this reinforces all the worst perceptions. Whenever the, the one thing we know about this election is whoever's under the spotlight suffers. Clinton is now under the spotlight because of this. And the other thing is that, you know, one of the things that Hillary Clinton 
had going for her over the last couple of weeks is she had people, her base, rallying to her. These millennials who were sort of iffy on her a little bit. Uh, these kind of revelations, this kind of news, might dampen the enthusiasm for some of those softer Clinton voters, and that won't help her in the end either. What about that, Monica? Because well, there was a uh, report today that that's part of Trump's game plan, is to, is to dampen enthusiasm and actually suppress voter turnout uh, from the key groups that she needs. Will this help? Yeah, I mean, Mrs. Clinton has always had a difficult time with voter enthusiasm for her and on her side, so this certainly does not help. We've got a group of about 10 to 20 percent of undecideds. That's the target that both sides are going for. Certainly Donald Trump needs the, that group of undecideds. So if you're Mrs. Clinton and her campaign, Megan, tonight, you have to be worried that these kind of disclosures are chipping away yep. um, at them, and they're just but, saying, and I hear this refrain over and over again, I cannot do the Clintons again. Bill, I can't do it. I'll give you the final word. Do you agree that, I mean, there may be chipping, but could there be enough chipping that it actually threatens her lead, whether it's three points or ten points, depending on which poll you look at? No. There's no poll in America that shows 10 to 20 percent undecideds. This race is cooked, and I don't think that anything about these new documents that Vladimir Putin wants American voters to see are going to shift <laughs> those few undecided voters mm -hmm. to make Donald Trump president. It's so, just not going to happen. It's a weird thing, because, you, you know, they, ha they are hacked. You feel a little uncomfortable because it is a, it's a valid point that they're hacked and we just sort of go ahead and cover them, but everybody's covering them and they've become a major political story. So anyway, it's, it's important to have the reminder, so Russia, Putin, bad, and then we proceed. Great to see you all. Thanks, Nick. Russia, Putin, bad. <laughs> Russia, Putin, bad. Lots of news still ahead tonight, including Charles Krauthammer and what we just learned about Trump's future plans for the Republican Party. Plus, Mr. Trump was today telling supporters